Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor. I want to remind everybody that today uh, at 12, in fact, going forward every Tuesday at 12 o'clock, myself and Brad Combs are going to do an X Spaces. I think what we're going to do is we're going to do it on, on my X account this week, and then we're going to interchange. So next week we'll do it on his, This then the next week we'll do it on mine. We'll just kind of switch out. But today at 12, we're going to talk about the XRP, a potential of an XRP ETF in 2024, 2025 should be fun. Now this is, this is great stuff right here. Um, this just continues on down the tracks with the same stuff we've been observing for all these years. This is Robbie Michnik, who's now at BlackRock and he's talking about the things he can talk about, the things he can't talk about. And as a backdrop to this, we know that his boss cannot talk about Larry Fink, a CEO of BlackRock. We know that he's not allowed to talk. He can't talk about an XRP at all. Won't even mention it. See what Robbie Michnik has to say. XRP community is the craziest. Here's what he had to say. When did you first spot the opportunity and go, OK, we got Bitcoin and we got BlackRock. How do I bring those two things together? Well, I joined actually in the summer of 2018. So coming up on six years now, and I had been at business school, I totally fluked into this internship at a company I hadn't heard of and nobody had heard of at the time called Ripple. And that was 2017. And you know, I interviewed for that internship and in April of 17, XRP was at two cents, their crypto token. When I started eight weeks later in June, it was at 28 cents. And three months after I left in January to, to go back to, to finish my MBA, it was at $3. And so that explosive journey, obviously incredible, fortuitous, fun timing. And I knew at that point I had to do something in this space, the opportunity. The other thing that he, di he didn't seem to talk about is, is how while uh, he was involved, he also did a, a value, an XRP valuation framework with Susan Athey um, for what XRP's valuation should be, but he can't talk about that either, I'm sure. It was just too great and, and too exciting, and it was apparent to me that BlackRock had a lot of potential to be a transformative force in this space, and so August 2018, I started as full-time employee number one in the digital assets realm, and uh, it's been a fun couple of years. Capital One question, what's in your crypto wallet? Oh boy, there's obviously... Now, as you hear this answer, I want you to ask yourself a question. Why would, would this guy that runs digital assets for BlackRock only be allowed to tell you that he owns Bitcoin and Ethereum? Why would that be? <laughs> I mean, think it through, folks. Bitcoin there. Is there's it iBit or Bitcoin? It's both. Okay. It's both. Yeah. There's some ETH there, and what's in beyond that, I'm not going to say. Okay. So I'm not trying to create okay. any market moving. Okay. Okay. So. Oh. <laughs> Probably for the best, not to answer the right. We're all on the same team when it comes to manipulating the Bitcoin and Ethereum markets, but we just can't go there if it, if it involves other things. So the XRP not yet. People are the craziest. Can we, can we agree? Up? We're the craziest. We're just we're, we're wild and crazy out here. And Yes. But no comment. <laughs> when they put that Forge XRP thing out, and I said, I called you guys, and they said, this is not true. I said, it's not true. The price went down to normal again. And for a week, they just dragged me. Yeah. They were like, this suit doesn't know anything. It was longer than a week. Yeah. They refused I, they to accept really that it was wild. fake. I mean, th there are some pretty intense elements to a lot of these token fan bases. It's, it's not just XRP. Well, in fairness here, guys, it, there's no community that's been uh, kicked around more than the XRP community. So at some point, you fight back. And that's kind of more the way I see it for the last few years is these guys tried to, I'm not saying these guys, the Bitcoin Ethereum thing, they tried to rig the game. Let's not forget that. They tried to rig this thing and create a monopoly. And we were the ones that stood up to the plate and to, to 
expose what they had tried to do. So there's no apologies over here for being wild and crazy. You'll have to get one from somebody else. Oh, speaking of, speaking of Ethgate, there's Chris Dixon. Speaking of, there's Mike Novogratz, Dimes to Donuts. He's going to be at Consensus this week. Um, there's Anthony Pompliano, who understood how big XRP was back in 2017, but now he just can't get his mind around it. There's Kathy Wood, who won't talk about anything except Bitcoin. Um, and there's Brad Garlinghouse, who says, laugh now, but one day XRP will power the world, something to that effect. Um, these are just some of the people that are going to be at consensus. Here's Brad Garlinghouse's part. He's going to be interviewed by a uh, Coindesk contributing editor. CEOs of, uh, of crypto's first enterprise focused player talks about his long running efforts to build the underlying financial rails for institutions around the world, its recent stablecoin announcement, acquisitions in custody field, and the challenges of running business during a protracted legal battle. Look at this. This guy is a Bitcoin maxi. This is the stupidest shit ever. My goal is to move away from corporations that control the world, not to give them more of my wealth. Bitcoin is the only solution. XRP is a slave coin. Ripple is literally working with countries to create CBDCs. I'm not interested in CBDCs. I want, to, I want whatever I can make to make central banks disappear. In other words, he's down with the banks. Maybe XRP will give you more fee. He's down with the banks, but Rajat Sani, CFA, will not, you will not see him address the Four Satoshis Bitcoin video where Homeland Security met with the Four Satoshis because that blows up his entire narrative. And not financial advice dot crypto says if you if you can only comprehend XRP as a slave coin, the Bitcoin is a freedom money. You have lost the plot and fallen victim to market making fr fiction. If you think a comprehensive list of cited facts is the stupidest shit ever, you're probably more interested in protecting long held misunderstanding for your own stubborn ego than learning what's actually going on. I couldn't agree more. Bitcoin ET, ETPs will start trading in London uh, on the London Exchange today. Are you prepared? Good question. This is a great one I had forgotten all about. This is when Elon Musk replied to Brad Garlinghouse about how the SEC is wants you to think they're transparent and all that. Don't believe them when the truth eventually comes out. Shamefulness of their behavior here will shock you. And Elon Musk says, no way. Now, this is good. This is from, this is Brad Combs right here talking about Tether. Listen up. This here is a clip, uh, uh, just a comment here from Eric Van Miltenberg from Ripple. And he says that uh, stablecoin is a natural extension of what we're trying to do. And I love it. He says here, he explains the introduction of stable coins and other blockchains like Polygon in the, la in the past have increased the level of total value locked on the chain improving trust in the blockchain. These stable coins are an important ongoing ramp and off ramp into the system. He says it's kind of a rising tide. It lifts all boats, introducing high quality stable coins into the XRP ledger ecosystem is going to be good for that community and will be good for XRP as well. And if we see the United States government and the Secret Service, which is already working hand in hand with Tether, shut Tether down. Couldn't we be watching a flood of that market cap of 109, 10 billion plus pour into the legitimate regulated stable coins and network and ecosystem? And voila, you have the regulated Internet of Value. Right? And this is safe to use, this XRP ledger, the Ethereum network, because a stable coin will be there as well. And then other networks and protocols can begin to connect to that interoperability of that ledger, right? Because the XRP ledger also acts as a decentralized exchange. I don't know. These things are starting to take shape. It looks like it makes sense for now. We'll see. 
Ooh, a lot in there that the crypto police might not like. Well, let me direct your attention. This is from Bank XRP. Uh, State of XRP Ledger, this is the Masari report they put out every year. State of XRP Ledger, Q1 2024. Payments increased 350%. Um, quarter over quarter, 2 million per day uh, due to inscriptions. The AMM went live end of quarter. DEX volumes on the CLOB increased 41%. A USD peg stablecoin was announced. So I went into their report and look what they say about the introduction of stablecoins. The introduction of a trusted stablecoin in a novel execution environment has proven to be a massive liquidity event. Massive liquidity event. In many cases, like Cardano I IUSD in 2023, particularly as a desired pairing asset for AMMs. Massive liquidity event. Imagine how massive the liquidity event would be if simultaneously you saw the government go after Tether. It would be a massive squared liquidity event. Zero Hedge, Wall Street now sees Ethereum hitting 14,000 in 2025. Here's why. Well, it's because they rigged the game to get an Ethereum ETF. Check this out. Uh, this is about China's, uh, what's going on over in China. Watch this. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I'll bet dimes to donuts that somewhere in that mix is Ripple. We'll get right back to being a bridge. So a couple of things happening on the international side. Uh, again, we see more countries expanding into the CBDC realm. We know that now that the People's Bank of China and the Hong Kong Monetary Authority have now expanded the scope of their cross-border digital yuan pilot. So they are now able to use uh, e renminbi across Hong Kong and China. So there is a, a growth of, of functionality there. We also now know that the Banco Central do Brazil announced its plans to regulate crypto assets, including stable coins. So it's going to be working through its rulemaking this year. And again, we continue to see on the international space this uh, technology being more and more adopted and more and more experimented with. And then moving on finally to some of the... Now, in DAIXRP.com, here's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about Mt. Gox because by pure coincidence, the week after crypto has this great week with, from a regulatory standpoint, the, the week after all of, of uh, crypto turned on the party in power and Donald Trump announced that he is going to back crypto. All of a sudden, Mt. Gox, this happens. 4,000 Bitcoin held by Mt. Gox bankruptcy trustee has moved for the first time in five years. <laughs> you have to wonder, folks, because I've told you all along, I've thought Mt. Gox, most of crypto has been a government operation. I've said that a million times. But in DAIXRP.com, we'll talk a little more about Mt. Gox, things I can't say out here. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends and family. I'm going to show you the good, bad, and the ugly of Mt. Gox. All right, here we go.